Hey guys, um, yeah, you may be wondering why I'm playing it starting in the middle of a Kerbal Space Program game, and, you know, why it's an odd intro. This is just so I can catalog the moment where I might successfully land on the moon for the first time ever. I've crashed into it a few times, and I can get orbits around Kerbin very well. But I think this is my first time actually succeeding. And frankly, this is the first. This is the only time where I've paid the least amount of attention because I've been listening to music the entire time, just kind of barely paying attention. I'm going way too fast now. I don't know how. I don't know the. F I should have. I never look anything up about this game. And I probably should to see, like, a good speed to land up, land with. Like, I know I'm still a good 4,000 meters away from the... ish from the surface. I mean, it's not exactly accurate, because it's... It goes off of the lowest point on the surface, so either on Minmus or on the moon or on Kerbin. But, I mean, for the, in this instance, the moon, of course. But... Yeah, I mean, I could... Because I, I, I'm landing on kind of a hilly area, which, you know, isn't really the best idea in the world, but frankly, at this point, I'm not good enough of the game to really be like, okay, well, I want to hit this area. I mean, I guess I could, but I wasn't certain if I'd have enough fuel. I actually ended up detaching. I had, like, a whole other fuel tank left on my main um, fuel line, and I ended up detaching it probably a little bit too early, but I just wanted to make sure that I wouldn't crash into the planet. Oh, and yeah, it's kind of quiet because, as I said, I was listening to music. I didn't really want to hear <sighs> while well, I was listening to music. It's not really, you know, the best background noise. And this is actually the very first time I've um, almost landed on the light side of the moon. Um, usually it's on the dark side and I can barely see a thing, so this should help. Yeah, I'm getting quite far down. I'm Going, I want to increase this a little bit. I want to be like, I want to be at like nine meters a second to land. I don't know why nine. I guess it's just because that's about to get off to where I'm gonna start seeing my um. That that's like the direction I go to gain speed. I don't actually know the official terms. I know retrograde, retrograde, and I know apoapsis and periapsis. But I mean, besides that, that's like the most I know about rocketry, and I think that's actually also in. Uh, planes and stuff. Aerophysics, I guess, or whatever. I wish I could find the sweet spot where I'm just, like, I'm not moving at all. Like, it'd be nice to have, like, a little slider, like, in reality, as opposed to using shift and control, because you could be a lot more accurate. Especially when it's such minute um, differentials that actually make a huge difference. I feel like I'm slowing down too early, but I feel like I'd rather slow down too early than too late. Because that's what ha what's happened before. Like, I'm on the dark side, and I can barely see a thing, so I'm, like, completely relying on that. Like, okay, it says I'm 1,200 away, and then I crash. And it's just like, oh, well... I started going up a little bit. Yeah, I don't know, like, I know you can safely land on Kerbin, of course, at, like, 13 meters a second, 16, but, of course, that's with an atmosphere, and, yeah, I mean, also, half the time it's in the water, but, I mean, even you can land on the land with that speed. So I don't really know exactly if the same physics applies here, when the gravity is a bit weaker, the uh, surface is a little bit, not a little bit, a lot rockier, and there's no atmosphere. I don't know if the atmosphere would really change how fast you can end up landing with. I mean, granted, on Kerbin, if you were to go as fast as you normally do, going into it, at least as I normally do going into it, the rock would probably burn up in the atmosphere, at least everyone inside would die due to heat. But, I mean, they don't, they haven't implemented that into the game yet, so let's hope that they never do, because if they do, my, I'm probably never going to be able to, um, enter back into Kerbin ever. I hope I have enough fuel to come... Well, actually, I don't know if I want to come back. 
I know there's a way to keep your ships there. Like, I know I have a bunch of, um, well, not a bunch, I have a little bit of uh, random debris orbiting Kerbin. And I think there's a way to get it to where your main capsule, like this thing, could stay. I'm going to try to figure that out, because I kind of want to keep it here. I kind of hate that the name for this thing is Test, because I really did not think it would work. But I think it will, unless 7 meters a second is still way too fast to land on the moon. If it is, then I'm going to rage quit. Um, not really, but I mean, if it's like, you must land at 2 meters a second on the moon, then... Yeah, I hope seven's enough. I'm getting really close. I hope I don't end up rolling over and falling, because I'm, you can tell I'm on the side of the, uh, the side of a hill, kind of. I mean, not completely, but uh, kind of. I'm kind of on the side of this. I'm worried. I mean, I'm going pretty slowly. It looks like I'm tilting. I don't think I am, though. It looks like it doesn't show that I'm tilting there. Maybe I should rotate a little bit. Will that help? No. I mean, it helps that straighten out, but I mean, it might just be that from seeing that in the back background, maybe. I don't know. I hope I'm not tilting. I shouldn't be, because it's pretty much right on the dot. You know, pretty much is fine. As they say in NASA, it's good enough. Um, no. I don't know. Uh, I'm really worried. I'm really, really worried. I think it'll make it. This is the slowest I've ever gone with hitting the moon. Because I started slowing down a lot earlier this time. Um, before. I mean, whenever I came back, I usually was about that slow, but then I'd stop because I noticed that I was slowing down. But I think this time it's going to be fine. Because that thing isn't spinning off to the other direction, so it looks like it's going to be coming here, and it's going to help me slow down, because, you know, of course, that's the opposite. Like, that means you're burning in the opposite direction of where your speed is, so my speed is all going down. That means that I'm burning up, of course. But if it flipped around the one without the X and without the, uh, the lines that are on the bottom and the left and right, then that would mean that I'm going the same direction that my main speed is going, so, I mean, I'd be going up. I'd be helping myself go up and away from the planet, but this is actually coming towards me. So I think that's good. I'm And I'm slowing down with it as well as it's coming down, which is weird to me. I don't see how it makes any sense that that's how it's happening, but it is. I'm going really, really slowly, and I'm still a good, like, maybe just a 1,000 meters off. Maybe I am really 2,400. Maybe this is, like, one of the lowest spots on the moon. I don't know, because it does look like it might be actually in a, like a kind of valley kind of thing between this slight incline and this hill over here. Well, I guess it's more of a hill over there as well. It looks like it might be that, kind of like a little flat area in between. Granted, I can't really tell that all that well. Oh, now it's going over in the other direction. I might have to cut my engines off soon going to. Really wish I could find the sweet spot. I'm sure I could if I had a slider to mess with it. Like, that's the closest I can get. I was in a really good one earlier, but of course, getting closer to the planet, or, yeah, asteroid, satellite, not asteroid, getting closer to the satellite made it uh, harder. To, well, I mean, it, not harder, I just couldn't keep it there or else I would have failed. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm really, I'm getting really close. You can see the carbon is disappearing over the hills. Yeah, I, I either wish I had, like, a, my own little, uh, switch. I can't really think of the name right now. Sorry, I'm focusing on this. Um, oh. I think four is too fast now, <laughs> because I was at three for so long. No, don't go four. Go at, like, two meters a second to hit the planet. I still crash and burn. Be so pissed. What? I was going two meters a second. How is that too fast? 
I'm so close. No, 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 you're going up, you're going up, that's not what I want you to do. You're still going up. There you go, go back down. But not too fast. Like at two meters a second. Uh, okay, I'm staying at 3.3 .3, it seems. Now, no, wait, no, you're going to start going up soon. Ah, I'm so worried, I'm so worried, I'm so worried. Oh, come on. Don't let Bill, Jebediah, and Bob down. They're counting on this. They want to stay on the planet, or on the asteroid, satellite. How can I not think of the word? No, 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 no. It, they didn't blow up. It was a success, everybody. <laughs> That's the best I've ever done, okay? At least they survived. And they exploded the decoupler and joy. Um, I consider that a complete success. It was my first time. We may have tipped over because I was going maybe probably a too slow for a while. It was probably the problem, so I started actually going to the side instead of completely down, thus making me have, you know, motion this way, and then of course I landed right there, so it still continued the motion, and yeah. So, I was probably being too cautious, but you know what? They didn't blow up this time, just the decoupler, and now our engine and fuel tanks and command module are all separated. But you know, it was a complete and utter success. Now let's try to figure out how to, uh, can I go to Space Center and then will they stay there? Let's see. Yes! My test is still there. Landed at the moon. I, I call it the moon because if I recall, it's supposed to have two little dots above there, which in German means that it has like an ooh sound, if I recall. So, yeah, it's the debris from the test, from before, from part of the test. And then th these are the other debris that I have from... I called it the lunar lander. It was the closest I've ever gotten to landing on the moon, but it didn't... It still crashed. And then that's also another part, I guess. Somehow. Maybe it's the same ship, but I just did it, I made a different design, but forgot to change the name. But we're, we landed on the moon successfully, um, I just thought I'd record it, because that's the best I've ever done at Kerbal Space Program, ever. Um, I'm very proud of myself. I'm sure some of you who are, like, masters of the game are like, that was completely awful, you should have done this and should have done this, but you know what, I don't care. I did amazing. And I don't care what you say, that was the best anyone has ever done at the game, except for everyone else who have played the game, but still, the polar ice cap was glitching out, yeah. Anyways, yeah, I, I was successful. I mean, for a while, even just crashing into the moon was a success, so, you know, I landed on it. They just can never leave, but as I said, they wanted to vacation there, so... Bill, Bob, and Jebediah are always there, and you know Jebediah's always going to have a smile on his face. They they have infinite supplies of food because they have ways to recycle. That's all I'm going to say. So they'll always have food and water. And um, they, they, they're like the... Uh, people in what's the book? Virtual War? I think it is. There's people who live on the International Space Station, or it, maybe it's not the International Space Station, but a space station that orbits um, the Earth. It's like a post-apocalyptic thing where everyone lives in domes. Um, and anyways, so they live on this like space station. These aren't the main characters, but they live on the space station, and they have ways of recycling, so they have food and water always, and they've actually lived there for hundreds of years, um, and they have machines that keep them young, so they're basically immortals that are stuck on a space station, and they live there, they've lived there for thousands of years, basically eating and drinking their own excrement, um, that's exactly what they're gonna do over on the moon, because 
we might not be the best pilots in the world or have the best pilots in the war world, but we definitely have the best technology, sure. Um, the uh, International Kerbal Space Program, the ISKP, or IKSP, International Kerbal Space, yeah, IKSP. So, very technologically advanced, we just don't really know how to fly things. But, you know, they'll be there forever. Jebediah will always find the bright side of things for the next few millennia staying on the moon until they all decide to commit suicide or whatever, I don't know. Whatever they want to do. Or maybe we'll eventually save them. I'm I'm not. Maybe someone else will. A third party. A third party international, or a third party space, Kerbal Space Program thing will go and save all those sad little Kerbals. Anyways... I hope they enjoy their eternity on the moon, and I know I definitely enjoyed getting them there. Um, maybe next time I'll try to land and then get back, or at least try to land without everything falling apart. But again, it was a success. They did not die for first. That was the very first time that I've ever had that happen, and it's amazing. And I really must say I love the new update with the whole debris thing. I mean, it's new for me. Um, I recently bought the game again. Well, not again, but I didn't own the game before because, um, you know how the game was free before? Um, for a while until I think it was version 0.13 or something, or 1.3 or whatever it is. Um, yeah, 0.13, or is it 0.1.3? I don't know. 0.13 um, is when they stopped it, and it's now the demo version. But I played the game quite a bit up until then. I never tried to land on the moon because uh, I just didn't. And then I buy the game like a few weeks ago, and they have like this nifty little space debris thing, and it's so cool. And now I get to leave Kerbals stranded on the moon forever. Yes, it's amazing. It's been my life dream to leave Kerbals stranded on the moon. Maybe I will litter, litter the moon with a bunch of command modules and lunar landers just dotted across the face so it's impossible to land on the moon without hitting one of them and dying and then I'll do that to um, Minmus and then I'll do that to Earth or Kerbin as well just like every single section of water and land will just be covered in rockets or rocket debris and it'll be amazing and then my next goal will be to get as many as much debris slash command modules orbiting the planet as there are satellites around the Earth. By the way, I think there's roughly 13,000 satellites around the Earth, maybe even more than that. If you've seen a picture of it, like a picture of, like, not necessarily every single satellite the way they look, but a picture of where they're positioned at the time of when that picture was taken, and, like, a representation of the satellites, it looks like we're basically building a shield around ourselves using satellites to try and stop anything that hits us, but it wouldn't really work, but I mean, it's still, like, it's crazy how many satellites we have. Speaking of which, did you know on Google Maps where, you know, there's all these nifty little pictures of random little, like, this is this street, this is that street, if you want to go here, type in the coordinates and blah, blah, blah. Um, I want to look at them. I guess I can't. Um... But, uh, yeah, did you know that those are all taken um, separately, like, a lot? Because of the fact that if they took it all in um, only a few pictures, which they could do, um, they don't because it would show up too many dots because of all the satellites. Yeah, it's kind of kind of crazy how much crap we put in our atmosphere and how much crap we put in our orbit. I mean, I'm kind of amazed that we can even get a rocket out of the well, not really. I mean, we we have a lot, but there's still a lot of gaps. Eventually, I see how I can see how it would be really difficult for us to get anything out of our orbit, or maybe it'll eventually turn into like a ring of satellites. We'll 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 be like Saturn, but with space junk. It'll be amazing. Probably wouldn't happen like that unless we started purposely trying to build up a satellite or a ring around us, which actually eventually would be very protective. Um, from things coming in because they'd be drawn into the ring partially from the gravity of the ring and the masses inside of it and then be 
crushed up that way, and then we'd have like our own little ring, but then it'd be really difficult to launch rockets out of our planet. But anyways, um, half of this video was random rambling, but it wasn't intended for anyone to really watch. It was just kind of, you know, I am marking this momentous occasion when I send three Kerbals to the moon to die, not to die, to live forever um, on recycled excrement. Um, because, yeah. I came up with that on the spot. But, well, I mean, I came up with it, like, I thought about the book. It's been a long time since I read the book. It's a really good book. I recommend you read it. It's called Virtual War, or something like that. I actually don't remember the name. I don't own the book. I just read it at the library once. Or, well, it's a series of books. It's a really interesting series of books. Like, really, really, really interesting. If you're into the whole sci-fi... It's, it's really more so sci-fi. I wouldn't really... I would. It is in a post-apocalypse kind of thing. But it's more so just like sci-fi, interesting, look what's happening to the world, like what's happened to it kind of thing, not really like a survival post-apocalypse thing, because I mean, they've already set up things to survive. It just kind of, it, I don't know, it's just really interesting. If, you, if you're interested in the science fiction books at all, which um, if you can't tell by now, I... That's basically the only type of book I read is science fiction books. I read fantasy, too, but mainly science fiction. They're really, really good, if you've never read them. Um, they're not my favorite book series. I'd probably say Ender's Game is maybe not my favorite, but one of them, definitely. I don't. It's hard to pick a favorite book. Um, the Dune series, actually, is probably my favorite. I haven't finished it yet, though, because it's summer, and I don't feel like reading during the summer. I only like reading during school, when I'm supposed to be doing other work. I don't know why that is. Um... Anyways, that's all for now. Oh, and as you can see, it took three days to get to the to the moon because I orbited around once, but I did it wrong. Like I I hadn't played the game in a in a while. Um, yeah, because I bought the game. When did I buy the game? Actually, uh, I think it was like a month ago. It was either a few weeks or a month ago. I don't know, but it's been a week or two. Um, I only played it for like a day or two once I bought it, because I had other stuff that came up, you know, the whole moving thing, and I just kind of forgot about it, and I just was playing a few other things and just kind of focusing on other stuff. But yeah, it's been like a week or two since I last played, so I and I had it nailed down how to hit the moon. I just wasn't very good at slowing down beforehand. Um, but yeah, and I got it completely wrong. I had my apoapsis way out here while the moon was, like, over here. And so I went through that a few times, and I was like, you know what, screw it. And I went in my apoapsis, and I increased my periapsis for a while until eventually I caught up with the moon over here. And then, finally, I started slowing down a hell of a lot. And then, you know, my Kerbals are where they are today, living forever, surviving off their own excrement. Um, yay. Sorry if you find any of that gross, but you know what? I don't care. Um, so, yay. I crash landed on the moon. They landed and they survived. They survived and they will survive forever and ever and ever. And they'll never be able to return to Earth because their bone mass will be too small. That's also another thing that was in the book. I think they could have returned to the Earth. Um, oh no, they couldn't. But then the way that the people got up there, I'm not going to spoil it too much in case you want to read it. Because this isn't a huge part in the book, if I recall. It's just like a little it's kind of like a little, a little detour thing like You've been hearing about this the entire time. Hear about this now for a little break and just something interesting. It's basically what it seemed like to me, at least. Um, but yeah, so they basically had lost so much bone mass because they were outside of gravity for a very long time because their space station didn't have artificial gravity on it. Um, because, of course, it was a really old space station. Um... So they had, like, no bone mass, pretty much, because they were so used to just living in no gravity. So even if they did want to get back to the planet, they couldn't, because they would literally be crushed under the Earth's gravity. Um, which is, yeah. So that's what's going to happen to them. <laughs> they have some gravity, but they don't have very much. So um, if they want to return ever... If anyone decides to save them, don't. Ne never save these Kerbals. They are doomed there forever. But Jebediah will always think it's a vacation. Um, again, that's all for now.